Welcome to part 5 of How to Make a Longbow. Today we're looking at some final tillering and the finishing processes such as sanding, checking the weight of the bow, stamping on some measurement details and polishing those knocks. Now that we've got the horn knocks on, uh, which means I've reduced now these tips which were stiff prior to putting on those knocks, we're obviously going to get a different overall shape because of the more movement that we're getting at either end. The amount I usually leave is probably, let's say, a foot. So I've, I've, I've made a change to this bow at least by a foot on each end of the tips. Let's draw it up now and see what we're getting. Okay, I've still got a flat spot somewhere around here. So I'm going to take a look at that and uh, get it back up on the tiller after that. Okay, we're back up on the tiller, so I've removed some from around this area here, which is slightly flat. Let's do a good few pulls and uh, see if it makes any difference. In case anyone's wondering where I've actually got the hook on the string there, the knocking point is not correct. This is just a tillering string, it's just a string I use for this purpose, so uh, don't worry about where I've placed the hook. Okay, what do we think folks? Has that made some difference? I think it has. It's looking a lot better shape now. Okay, I'm going to check the measurements and see what the distances are between the limbs and see what we think. I've done the measurements now and by measurements I mean by going out a certain distance from the top and bottom of the handle. In this case I went out about 8 inches and then measured from that point to the string and the measurements are correct and correct I mean that the top limb is about 2 eighths of an inch d deeper here than it is here because of the length of the top limb, the top limb therefore bends slightly more to accommodate that difference in the length. So we've got a two eighth inch of an inch, two eighths of an inch difference here compared to here. Um, those measurements you could do six inches out, eight inches out, and twelve inches out, so just to make sure that it's the same throughout the length of the limbs. Okay, let's draw it up now and see how it's starting to look. Okay, I'm happy in general with how this is looking now, and as I say, the measurements are correct. I'm going to do a bit of fiddling around with the tiller off camera, just to do a little bit here and there, just until I'm super happy. And obviously it will depend on whether this is coming out to the desired weight to compare to the draw length that I'm after. Um, one of the reasons I'm going to be doing it off camera is because I obviously you can't see the setup that I've got here, but I've set the camera up in the position that I would normally stand in 
to show you exactly what I would be looking at when I'm tillering, which does mean uh, the entire time I've been making this bow, I'm making it by looking at a two inch by two inch little screen, which uh, is not that easy. So I'm gonna do a bit of the final tillering on my own to my heart's content without your prying eyes and without this blooming camera being in the way. After checking the tiller, I can move on to finishing the bow, starting with a smooth cut file to get rid of any larger marks or ridges that might have been caused by other tools. I use long strokes to avoid creating dips and use minimal pressure, being mindful of that D-shaped curve of the limbs. Then I can move on to using the scraper. Used correctly and carefully, you can remove any heavy to medium marks that are left. Then comes the exciting part. Anyone who's worked with wood will know the tedious yet necessary process of sanding. And it's no different here. Lots of elbow grease, and finer and finer levels of grit until you're using the finest sandpaper you have. And eventually, you should be able to only see the grain of the wood, as you can see here in these very close-up pictures. Obviously, the more you sand the bow, the less weight you'll end up with. So at some point, you'll need to get the bow back on the tiller and check the weight. Richard's using an electronic scale here, but any kind will do. The advantage with this one over a mechanical one is it will display the highest weight it got to during the pulling and remain on the screen as you walk back to the tiller. As it's come out at 36 pounds, we'll mark the bow at 35 as it will lose a pound or so during its first initial use when in the hands of the customer. We use metal number stamps to mark our bows. You can of course use any method that you like. On a longbow, we tend to mark the draw length, which is the draw length of the customer and the draw length to which the bow has been made for. We also mark the weight at that draw length. As we make bows for a living, we also use a serial number, which consists of the date of construction and the number of bows since we started keeping a record of bows produced. Traditionally, Victorian longbows have a distinct handle section. To make them more comfortable, small pieces of wood were glued to the back and sides that were then shaped before applying the wrapping, making for a more comfortable feel in the hand. The pieces of wood do pop off over time and can cause our customers some concern as the bow starts to make creaking noises from the handle section. To get round this, we use some two-part filler that you may use on a car. Once dried, it can be shaped to suit the hand. This is our branding iron stamp, which consists of the RH logo. We heat it up in a gas flame and very carefully place it on the back of the bow. And if we're lucky, it should come out okay. Now we've done all the marking that we need to, it's time to varnish the limbs. We recommend using a cloth dipped into varnish and then applied in consistent strokes. Check for excess varnish runs as you go as these can be difficult to rectify once dry. We tend to apply at least two coats and allow a day's drying in between.
Once you're happy with your varnish finish, it's time to polish the knocks. We use a car rubbing compound, such as T-Cut or similar brands. Metal polishing compounds also work, such as Brasso. Carefully secure the bow, apply the product to the cloth and begin rubbing as shown. Some people favour a polishing wheel attached to an electric drill. But if you do go down this route, I suggest protecting the wooden limbs. It's now that you get to see the true beauty of your work. That's it for part 5. Like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can join us for the final part of how to make a longbow. Thanks for watching and happy bow making.